who could be coming at this time of night? Who, who's that knocking? What's that sound? What, is it somebody coming to get me? That's the premise of Cecil Francis Alexander's poem, or ballad, if you prefer, Stumpy's Bray. She wrote it and had it published when she was in her 20s in the Dublin University magazine in the 1840s, when she was Cecilia Frances Humphreys, before she would meet or marry the um, person who would later become the Bishop of Derry. It's quite a strange ballad, we should say, from the off for a um, bishop's wife to be thinking up and indeed publishing. It's a story of murder and retribution and supernatural elements taking over to make sure that retribution is visited upon people up until the 19th generation. So where in the world did Humphreys get this idea from? If we look at the structure of the ballad, it looks very close to the traditional ballad of England, Scotland and Ireland, and has quite a lot in common with Samuel Taylor Coleridge's Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. For an added Halloween twist. Coleridge was one of the first people in Britain to use the term zombie. And he had debated with Robert Southey, another early adapter of this term, its meaning and significance and, and what this, this idea of a zombie might be for, um, for British literature. Now we can't necessarily say that Cecilia Francis Humphreys, Stumpy's Bray, is a zombie. But critics have suggested that Coleridge's Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner and the Mariner's central character has a number of characteristics of an undead person um, trying to live on. And once I kind of read this poem to you in the semi-Scotch um, language or dialect that um, Humphreys noted in, in the, the Donegal Derry um, borderland, um, you might wonder, is Stumpy someone of the past or perhaps someone who lives on in the present? The Legend of Stumpy's Bray. Heard ye no tell of Stumpy's Bray? Sit down, sit down, young friend. I'll mak your flesh creep the day and your hair stand on end. Young man, it's hard to strive with sin and the hardest strife of ah is where the greed again creeps in and drives God's grace awa. Oh, it's quick to do. But it's lang to rue when the punishment comes at last, and we would give the world to undo the deed that's done and past. Over yon strip of meadow land and o'er the burny bright, dinna ye mark the fir trees stand around yon gables white. A mind at wheel in my younger days, the story yet was rife. There dwelt within that lovely place a farmer and his wife. They sat together all alone in blessed the autumn night when the trees without in hedge and stone were white in the sweet moonlight. The boys and girls were gone do now, a wee to the blacksmith's wake. There passed in on by the window small and gave the door shake. The man he up and opened the door when he had spoken a bit, a peddler man stepped into the floor. Down he tumbled a packy boor, right heavy pack was it. Good save us all, says the wife with a smile, but yours is a thriving trade. Aye, aye, I've wandered money a mile, and plenty have I made. 
The man sat on by the dull fire flame when their peddler went to rest. Close to his ear the devil came and slept until his breast. He looked at his wife by the dim fire light and she was bad as he. Could we no murder on man the night? Aye, could we, ready, quo she. He took the pickaxe without a word, whence it stood a hint the door, and he passed in, the sleeper stirred, but never wakened more. He's dead, says the old man coming back. What the court, my dear? We'll bury him snug in his ain bit pack, never you mind for the loss of the sack I've taken out ah the gear. The pack's o'er short, but twa good span. What'll we do, quo he? Ock you're a doited and thoughtful man. We'll cut him aff at the knee. We shut the corp, and he packed him tight, with his legs in a pickle hay. O'er the burn in the sweet moonlight, they carried him to this bray. They shoveled a hole right speedily. They laid him on his back. All right, pair of ye, quo the peddler, quo he, sitting bolt right upright in the pack. You think you've laid me snugly here and none shall know my station, but I'll haunt you far and I'll haunt you near, father and son with terror and fear to the 19th generation. The twa were sitting the very next necked when the dog began to car and they knew by the pale blue fire licked that the evil one had power. It had struck a nine, just nine of the clock, the hour when the man lay deed, there came to the outer door a knock and a heavy, heavy tread. The old man's head swam round and round, the woman's blood gan freeze, for it was not a natural sound, but like some in stumping o'er the ground and the beans of his twa bare knees. And through the door like a sigh of air and stump, stump round the twa with his bloody head and his knee beans bare, they missed had died of awe. The wife's black locks, her morn grew white. They say as the mountain snows, the man was as straight as a staff that night, but he stooped when the morning rose. Still year and day as the clock struck nine, the hour when they did sin, the sin, the wee bit dog band began to whine and the guest came clattering in. A neck there was a fearful flood, Three days the skies had poured, and white with fame and black with mud, the burn and fury roared. Quo, she, good man, and it's o'er the lynn, and it's up to the meadow ridge. I quo the stumpy hurtling in, and he gave the wife a slap on the chin, but I come round by the bridge. And stump, stump, stump to his plays again, and o'er the stools and chairs, ye surely thought ten women and men were dancing there in pairs. They sold their gear, and o'er the sea to a foreign land they went, o'er the sea, but why can flee his appointed punishment? The ship swam o'er the water clear with the help of the eastern breeze, but the very first sound in guilty fear or the wide smooth dreck that fell on their ear was the lapping and tapping of them twa knees. In the woods of wild America, their weary feet they set, but the stumpy was there the first they say, and he haunted them on to their dying day, and he follows their children yet. I heard you, never the voice of blood called from the earth in vain, and never has crime one worldly good, but it brought its after pain. This is the story of Stumpy's Bray and the murderer's fearful fate. Young man, your face is turned that way. You'll be ganging the night that gate. You'll ken it weel, though the few, through the few fir trees, the house where they want to dwell. Gin you meet in there as daylight flees, stumping about on the beans of his knees. It'll just be Stumpy himself. Of course, it's just a poem made up to pass the time to fill in a little bit of local colour about the so-called place of Stumpy's Bray. But make sure the door's locked tonight. Make sure everything's secure. 
We don't want anything strange or startling, living or undead coming to see you now. Do you?